Welcome back once again all of my low carb friends and for those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. Today I have another very easy, very delicious keto bread roll recipe for you. Today we are going to make keto cheese bombs. These are so good. They're nice and soft and slightly flaky on the outside, filled with yummy gooey cheese. Mm, they are delicious and they are easy to make. So if you want a printable version of this recipe, you can check out my website at janetsdeliciouslowcarbkitchen.com. You can find a printable version of this recipe and other goodies there for you. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see lots of easy, delicious, low-carb keto recipes, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the notification bell that's right next to the subscribe button. That way you can be notified every time I put out videos every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you'd like to help support the channel, make sure you scroll down in the description of the video. You'll see some affiliate links. Anytime you purchase anything, using those affiliate links, a small portion of your purchase will go to me and help support the channel. So while you do all that, let's get cooking. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Line a large baking sheet with parchment paper and set it aside for a minute. In a large mixing bowl, combine 90 grams or around 3 fourths cup of coconut flour. 15 grams or around 1 tablespoon of baking powder, 2 grams or around 3 fourths of a teaspoon of xanthan gum. This is going to help your dough to have stretch so that it can be shaped easily without falling apart. And if you're sensitive to coconut flour taste, you can add some salt or dry seasonings of your choice. That's up to you if you want that. Sift the dry ingredients all together until it's fully combined and there are no lumps in the dry ingredients. Add three large room temperature eggs. Make sure they are room temperature so they stir in more smooth. Stir the eggs into the dry ingredients until everything is fully combined and all the dry ingredients are moist. Add a half cup of butter that's been melted and cooled. Make sure it is cooled. You do not want to put in hot butter. Stir the butter in until everything is fully combined. Add 60 grams or around a fourth cup of room temperature plain yogurt or sour cream. Again, make sure this is room temperature. Room temperature ingredients combine better, which makes for a softer dough, which makes for a softer bread. Stir everything all together until it is fully combined and you have a soft dough that has formed. Scrape down the sides of the bowl and push the dough to the center of the bowl. Then form the dough into a smooth ball. Massage the dough ball in your hands for about one minute. This is to make sure of the texture of the dough. You want to make sure that all of your ingredients are binding together well. There shouldn't be any ingredients flaking off or anything like that. It should be nice and moist and you have a very smooth, stretchy dough. After you've massaged the dough for a minute, form it back into a ball and place it back into your mixing bowl. Then allow it to sit uncovered at room temperature for about five minutes. This is just going to help any extra moisture be absorbed and also help the xanthan gum to start binding the ingredients together really well so that when you go to shape your bread, it stays together well. While the dough is sitting and absorbing the extra moisture, take some cheese and cut it into about seven portions that weigh around a half ounce each, give or take a little bit. It really all depends on how much cheese you're going to want in the center of your roll. Then set the cheese aside for just a second. After the dough has sat for five minutes and absorbed any extra moisture, then scoop the dough out around a fourth cup at a time and place it onto your prepared baking sheet. You should have about seven portions once you're done scooping it all out. Then take the portions one at a time and roll each portion into a smooth dough ball. Then press the dough out to around a four inch diameter circle, give or take a bit. Place one of the half ounce portions of cheese that you cut into the center of each dough circle that you've pressed out. Then pull the dough around the cheese and roll the dough into a smooth ball. Make sure it is completely smooth. You want the cheese fully sealed in to your roll. If you do have any cracks or anything, 
then the cheese is going to gush out the sides once it's baked, which isn't a disaster, but you ideally don't want it to do that. You want it to stay as much inside of the roll as possible. I make mine around two inches in diameter. You can make them as big or small as you want to. That's up to you. But after you have rolled them into a ball and you place them back on your baking sheet, use your hands and just flatten the tops just a little bit so you have a nice smooth flat top. Also, when you put these on your baking sheet, put them around two inches apart. I've told you guys before, coconut flour really doesn't expand a whole lot, but these do expand just a little bit. So make sure you do spread them out a little bit on your baking sheet. Once the rolls are all shaped, place the rolls in your preheated oven and bake at 400 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes or until the rolls are golden. For me, 15 minutes was perfect. Everyone's oven is different, so you're looking for the rolls to be nice and golden on the outside. Once the rolls are done baking, remove them from the oven and you can let them firm up on your pan for a few minutes and then eat them immediately. Or you can top them with a butter herb topping, which is what I'm doing. And in order to do that, as soon as you remove the rolls from the oven in a small bowl, melt three tablespoons of butter, then add two or three teaspoons of the Italian seasoning of your choice. I'm using garlic powder, dry oregano, dry basil, and dry parsley, and I mix them all into your butter until the herbs are evenly distributed throughout the butter. Then brush the desired amount of the butter herb topping on top of your warm rolls. Then transfer the rolls to a wire rack. You can eat them immediately while they're warm, or you can allow them to cool completely on the wire rack. That's up to you if you want them warm or room temperature. If you do have any leftovers, allow them to cool completely, then store them in an airtight container in your refrigerator for up to five days. Eat and enjoy. And that's our recipe of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you click that thumbs up like button, click that subscribe button, leave me a comment if you want to. Let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make and I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, keep cooking.